Center of Trends at YouTube. I spent nearly eight years tracking on trends. At YouTube, I'm also the author of this book, Videocracy, How YouTube is Changing the World, the Double Rainbow, Singing Foxes, and Other Trends for Kids Stop Watching. Um, it came out in January, it's published by Google Square. It combines a lot of the things that I've learned studying viral trends over the years <laughs> and shows how the ways that we're interacting with video will help them to affect our relationship with our entertainment. I've actually had the privilege of addressing this audience before as part of the Creator Keynote in 2015. Is anybody here then? 2015? 2015 was a different time, right? The biggest trend was this. Shia LaBeouf's biggest creative achievement that year involved him shouting things in front of a green screen. Do it! To be fair, it was actually other people remixing his shouting into other things that didn't. I'm sorry, Tim. I'm afraid I can't do that. Yes, you can! <laughs> <laughs> but it feels, it feels like a lot has changed in, these, in those few years since, right? The ecosystem of web videos continue to evolve. The number of channels with over a million people subscribed has grown massively. That little Nene girl is like 20 and probably in college now. <laughs> But perhaps the biggest change is that the medium of web video has become more established. There are more business opportunities, more professional content being produced, and what it means to be a creator in 2018 can feel more entrepreneurial than creative. I first fell in love with YouTube in its earlier years. It was kind of a messy but magical time. Uh, but I often wonder if the opportunity of success had begun to diminish that wonderful serendipity, or worse, if success had, much like TV and other mediums before, become dependent on following wrote rules and just optimizing around the very trends that I had been tasked with tracking. I decided to investigate that, but I didn't know where to start at the time. You see, every day, this vast, mind-boggling range of channels are drawing viewership on everything from quilting to sneakers to neuroscience to chickens singing Camilla like Cabello Savannah. <laughs> Big Marvel is a South Korean gentleman who first broke out making music with calculators. Before moving on to more unexpected musical instruments like glasses. And uh, old Windows PCs. <laughs> stuff just got stranger and more perfect over time. <laughs> now, his busy... <laughs> his videos resonated with me because they were so peculiar, you know? Uh, and while he leveraged popular songs and trends, his work still felt totally unique. Big Marvel has grown almost 4 million subscribers in just the past year, and I thought maybe that just might be an anomaly, so I had this idea. Last year we launched Creator on the Rise, which was a system to identify and track up and coming channels. We've had over 600 of them now across 11 countries, so I did some quantitative and qualitative analysis to see what I could learn and share with you today from that step. So on average, these channels had around 30,000 subscribers when we find them, and they see an almost five-fold increase uh, in a year. Right? That's just an average. Some of them spike a lot faster, and the other ones see a little bit of a slower climb. But overall, it's a pretty decent representation of smaller channels that have been seeing success in the past year. I found that 250 of the 600 Creator on the Rise channels do some form of vlogging. So this is Classroom Diva, who vlogs about life as a teacher. Some people vlog by themselves, like Matisse Anjami, who vlogs about her life with a stutter. Uh, while some people vlog together, like collegiate vlogging couple Slice and Rice. Ninjas. This is a slash. And rocks. They're very fun. Uh, some vloggers are thrilling. Others are super inspiring, like Amy Lee Fisher in Manchester, England, who shares her experiences as a person dealing with chronic illness. Obviously, everyone's situation is different, but I don't think that chronic illness, you know, you should never say that you can't do something because of it, because you 
can is just you've got to find a different way around it. You know, you might not be able to do something straightforward. You might have to take a detour or go a different way to the average person. But it by no means doesn't mean that you can't do it. When I looked at the topics and categories that the Creator on the Rise channels fell into, I found that many seemingly broader topics that these channels have in common are actually quite personal. If you remove some of the high-level topics like music or food or lifestyle, what remains is this portrait of a group of individuals not chasing some larger trend, but rather seeking to express the things that they cared about. Right? Expressions of passion, of individuality, hobbies and recipes, and video games and tutorials across this wide range of expertise. There were seven different channels from fishermen, um, spanning Australia, Japan, the United States. The most popular of these was from an American male cheerleader turned outdoorsman and fishing guru, because society does not have to define you. Um, his name, by the way, is pretty fantastic. What's up guys, it's Jack Victor Tolan, and today is a special day. Today I'm going to be able to catch my first halibut, hopefully. I challenge you to find a better channel name on YouTube right now than Yappy Tuan Tuan. What's up guys, it's Yappy Tuan Tuan. It is such a good name. <laughs> What's up guys, it's Yappy Tuan Tuan. <laughs> Sorry, I really just love that. Okay. Um, there are channels from many different artists. Uh, Polka in Japan does these photo real estate recreations, and Casey Golden does these um, these artist challenge videos. She actually made this watercolor with coffee. Um, there are some totally epic drag queens like Candy Crash in Germany and uh, Kine here in the U.S. Hi everybody, this is Kine. For those of you who don't know who I am, um, I want to say first of all, how dare you? <laughs> you can learn cricket from former international player Snehal Pradhan in India. You can learn how to study from a medical student at Cambridge University in the UK, or you can learn how to make felted cats from this woman in Japan. I will admit that this channel has yet to become super popular, but it has haunted my dreams for several weeks. So. <laughs> In analyzing these Creator on the Rise channels, we found a few interesting recurring themes. So we saw a surprising number of channels from people who had chosen to live alternatively, often giving up their homes and possessions to live in vans, or in the case of this couple, um, who I'm very jealous of, aboard a boat as they travel around the Caribbean. There were 10 channels from unusual animal enthusiasts and their pets. For example, Emma Lynn Sampson in Canada shares her experiences caring for 26 animals with whom she shares her apartment. Crazy to me, I have enough trouble sharing my apartment with one lab duel. <laughs> Mob bloggers have been a thing on YouTube for years, and there were a lot of them in our sample, but there were a number of, also a number of channels about modern fatherhood. Uh, one of them was by someone named Mark Coyle, who was known as Lad Baby. Mm. Funny story about Lad Baby. Uh, last week he beat Prince William and others to be named Celebrity Dad of the Year in a contest in the UK. There was no real typical mold that these creators that were rising fit into. One channel was run by someone who was legally blind. James Rath is a filmmaker with severe visual impairment. Here he is explaining how he edits his videos. I switch on and off with uh, voiceover. Voiceover is fully accessible. Zero, zero, zero. We often think about YouTube as a young person's game, but Pasta Grannies features elderly Italian grandmothers sharing regional recipes before they're lost to time. Many of them don't necessarily have the typical on-camera abilities that we associate with YouTube creators. La pasta prepare macaroni de ninja. E poi cosa devo dire? Giuseppe. Giuseppe Corcu. Allora, comincio a finire. Some of these don't even, some of these channels didn't even star people. Um, Yutako in Japan recreated levels from Mario for a hamster to run through in a series called Hummel Mario. <laughs> If 
I've learned anything in studying in eight years studying video trends is that YouTube adapts to the desires of the audience, not necessarily the other way around. When we first learned about El Mundo de las Hormigas, or uh, World of Ants from Spain, the team didn't think that a channel about an ant farm would be particularly popular. While the idea of this channel personally makes my skin crawl, uh, it's become one of the most successful Creator on the Rise channels so far. Over half a million people have subscribed to David's channel about ants since January. In this environment, a channel called Galaxy Goats cut a massive quarter of a million subscribers and 30 million views ma making insane and objectively terrible parodies of rap songs. Two hundred and thirty thousand people are subscribed to this channel. <laughs> I actually actually kind of love it. And you can also make your own Galaxy Goats video if you are so interested. As someone as, who loves analyzing trends, I was interested to see how this sample of rising creator channels interacted with popular memes and fads. Um, over the last year, you might have noticed that this song had gained a resurgence thanks to some popular memes about it. Somebody now, a lot of Lots of the channels that I looked at in this set use All Star in their own videos, uh, from a talented multi-instrumentalist who recreated it as a jazz song, to a comedy group who did it as a TED Talk. We found once a year start coming, they don't stop coming. <laughs> to whatever this is. capitalizing on a popular trend, but they do so in their own individual way. Uh, based on some of our... <laughs> it looks like, based on some of our search and upload data, that one of the current meme songs of the moment is Africa by Toto. Some of you uh, seem to be familiar with that. There are a lot of weird covers of it, but also Music Analysis Channel 12 Tone use it to make a, a master class in song construction. Africa by Toto, which starts with one of the most iconic riffs of all time. And if we ignore this bit here for a second, we're basically just moving back and forth between two chords, A major and C sharp minor. The best way to think about this is that the trend becomes not an end in and of itself, but rather a means to an end of self-expression. If you look at something like the morning routine fad, right, where people document and share how they start their day, uh, we've had over 50 of the channels in the set that I looked at and made these types of videos, and we saw a wide range of styles from different types of creators. Uh, Hindi-speaking creator Preeti recorded the experience of her early morning routine in a remote area of northern India. Jinti Fell, who travels around Australia and Southeast Asia living out of a van, shared her morning routine with her toddler. Paraplegic Zach Kali offered his morning routine to spread a greater understanding of life with spinal injuries. What I saw was that in each of these creators, it wasn't about using the trends to be a part of something everyone else was doing, but instead to use trends to share a part of oneself, right? Can trends help expose you to, do, to new audiences? Yes. Does it benefit you to create things that appeal to lots of people? Yes, of course. But audiences connect not always with the subject matter, but with the person who's exploring it with them. So, in this case, with you. In other words, the fact is that you are greater than any trend. Your perspective, your creativity, your voice ultimately supersedes any trending phenomenon. The emphasis on individuality is dramatically influencing popular culture. Right? This, this type of communication, the way that you communicate with your fans, is what pop culture is today. I mean, look around, right? Some of the world's highest grossing movie stars of this century are using it to maintain relevance with their fans. Will Smith launched his YouTube channel just a few, a few months ago, and it wasn't a hit right out of the gate. It was successful once he began embracing the same techniques and strategies that you employ. Right? That's true of a number of celebrities. Think about it. The Rock makes React videos now. <laughs> Kevin Durant collabs with the slow-mo guys. And Will Smith is a vlogger. Oh, you, you, you told me my says you've gone YouTube stupid. Now what is does that, what does that mean? No, I don't think that's true. No. I don't think that's true. No, no what's exciting for me? Uh, You're uh, excited? I'm very excited. Yeah. It's my YouTube channel.
The reason that I titled my book Videocracy is because our pop, pop, popular culture is now shaped by and reflected by the ways that each of us as individuals interact with these new media technologies. We've seen a change from a time when those with the access to infrastructure, the majority of us did not, held almost all the influence. And this presents huge opportunities for creative, talented people. Almost every channel that I shared with you today, including Will Smith's, by the way, had less than 10,000 subscribers at the start of 2017. People act like what you do is easy. It's not. It's very hard. Creating good videos is hard. Building meaningful audiences is harder. Though it helps have a really great name. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? It's Happy Tom Juan. <laughs> but ultimately, it doesn't matter how good your name is. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter what conditions, what your conditions are. It doesn't matter how furry you are. What defines success and what defines this medium continues to be the unique individual point of view that only you can bring. Thank you.